the seven games of Premier League football, Manchester United is sat in the 10th position with only nine points. And just now, a new interview has surfaced in which Zlatan Ibrahimovic is talking to Piers Morgan and basically stating that Eric Ten Hag might have been able to deal with youngsters and talents at Ajax, but he's not ready to deal with the big boys at Manchester United. And for that reason, today, the first big club rebuild of FC24 had to be Manchester United. It just needed to happen because as things stand, it doesn't look good for Ten Hag. So where are the issues within this Manchester United team right now? First of all, you have the issues of Anthony, which were obviously private, but then have become quite public as well. In midfield, we had the problem of not necessarily having the legs to actually track back and defend. Amrabat is the perfect signing for that. He is definitely someone that needs to be in the starting 11 at all times if possible for this Manchester United side. But injuries have held them back. Luke Shaw is not fit right now. Martinez also not fit. Probably out for quite a bit. Is apparently getting operated on. And if you go down the list here, on the bench you still have... Harry Maguire, how is he still here? It, it blows my mind how that guy is still there. And then, of course, the public issues surrounding Jaden Sancho. They are not stopping. He has deactivated his Instagram. People are speculating about everything right now. Apparently, he's incredibly unprofessional and just rather plays FIFA. Yep, that's apparently what's happening. And yeah, it just blows my mind how so many things have been blown out of proportion. But at the same time, talents have stepped up. Kobe Maino, before his injury, looked very, very good. Mejbri has actually played a game for Manchester United as well. I don't even know if that was in a Premier League or in a cup competition, but he looked good. And then you have talents like Garnacho as well, who can do great things. So you do wonder, with a couple of really big names in this side, what is holding back this Manchester United team? Is it well and truly Eric Ten Hag? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm really interested in this discussion. I personally do think that he's not ready for the job. Why do I believe that? Well, PSV Eindhoven and Eredivisie DVC side is doing incredible things in their league. They are smashing everyone. And then they stepped up a level to play in the Champions League against Arsenal and got battered. Looked worse than I've seen them play in the past months and possibly years. So there is a massive gap in quality when you go from the Eredivisie into the Premier League. That is just a harsh reality. And maybe that gap has become too big for Ten Hag to handle. Just my opinion. Let me know what you think. So as the new coach of Manchester United, what are the first couple of things I do? Well, I do get rid of Donny van der Beek. That project has not worked and I don't think it will ever work. And obviously, Harry Maguire just has to go. That is a fact. This player was never fit to wear that shirt, in my opinion. Yes, he had some good performances at times, but at the end of the day, for a club like Manchester United, which a lot of people seem to have forgotten, this team used to dominate. This team used to buy the best players when they already had the best ones. And Harry Maguire just doesn't fit that category. I just, uh, It just blows my mind that he's still here. But Diallo is being sent out on loan. I think that would be something that would make a lot of sense. It worked out very well for him last season. I think this season, Pelistri seems to get a little bit more playtime over someone like Diallo whenever Anthony isn't there. I could be mistaken here, but Diallo is being sent out on loan. And the same happens with Jadon Sancho. It's not just a one-year loan. It's a two-year loan. And there is no comeback for Jadon Sancho. He goes out right? He goes and plays somewhere and at the end of the loan deal, hopefully he's high rated enough and a bunch of clubs want to buy him. That is the plan with him. There is no return for Jadon Sancho to Manchester United. I just need to cut these things off. If I'm becoming the Manchester United manager, that's what you just have to do. Be clear and precise with your decisions. The number one thing that Manchester United should have done in this past transfer window, in my opinion, was to bring in an experienced striker. Harry Kane should have been the option, but we are bringing in Mehdi Taremi. Now, this guy was also linked to Manchester United. I'm telling you right now, in his last 35 games, he has 26 goals, 5 assists, some numbers like that. But Mehdi Taremi has been doing it for years at Porto and also has been doing an incredible job for his national team. 
that isn't one of the best out there. Rasmus Hoylund is a great talent. Do not get me wrong. I don't necessarily think Taremi is the long-term solution. But in my opinion, Manchester United needs someone to come in and basically allow Hoylund to have a little bit less pressure to be able to grow behind a player that has already proven himself on the highest level in the Champions League as well. Now, don't get me wrong. I do understand that basically... Taremi hasn't played in the Premier League or anything, but in my opinion, he would have been the perfect player, apart from Harry Kane, for this Manchester United side. As a short-term solution that would have made a lot of sense, instead of bringing in someone like Big Host, who has only done it in Turkey and didn't necessarily look too great when he came into this Manchester United squad, I think Taremi is the perfect solution. And... Manchester United right now, as we speak so far this season, have only scored seven goals. So clearly, they're lacking something up front. And you know what? Because we got a new striker and because I don't think Martial will ever reach the levels that Manchester United fans hoped he would reach when he came in at first, we're going to let him go too. Yes, Martial is leaving. 22.2 million. Lisandro Martinez is an injury-prone player, so I am bringing in a new left-footed centre-back into this Manchester United side because they are lacking another one. It is Trajinja Pavlovic. Why am I going for this transfer? The reason for it is he plays at Salzburg, a team that knows how to hold on to the ball, a team that knows how to build from defense into attack, which is obviously something that United is trying to do now, especially with the signing of Onana. So for me, this was a clear, clear transfer that just needed to happen. Pavlovich is walking straight onto the bench here. And I can tell you, as much as I like Eriksen, again, he's not the future of Manchester United. And I honestly massively doubt that Mason Mount will ever be a starter for Manchester United for a long period of time. I didn't want him to join Liverpool when he was linked to them. I'm glad he went to United. I don't think it's a good thing if a Liverpool fan is glad that a player has joined United. That's all I'm going to say. But Strahinja Pavlovic is a giant of a man, six foot four tall, left footed, knows how to do the build up game. Perfect for United, in my opinion. If I'm not mistaken, Cristiano Ronaldo in an interview with Piers Morgan as well, I believe, has actually said that Manchester United's facilities and the club itself hasn't necessarily changed much. So see this investment into the coaches as an investment into the facilities of Manchester United, please. As we speak, Manchester United is about to play a Champions League matchup against Galatasaray. I'll probably keep you guys updated within this video and give you my thoughts, but Champions League, we actually got to the semi-finals only to be beaten by Manchester City. That is extremely impressive if you ask me. I'm actually very happy to see that we have gotten this far. It seems like the transfers that we have brought in have worked, but in the Premier League, we finished in the third position. I think if you give that to any Manchester United fan right now and tell them, hey, you're going to finish the season in the third place, they'd be very happy with that because then they can keep on saying or keep on basically spending decent amounts of money as they remain a Champions League club. So Manchester United, 74 points, third place, Champions League football secured, still plenty of money in the bank that I haven't spent, but I wanted to basically trust these players that I honestly think are good enough for this team. Now, I personally have to say, I don't think Anthony is that guy. You're not that guy. I don't think he will ever be that guy. I I like Anthony in, in, in Anthony, sorry, in certain ways, but I don't think he is that Manchester United player. Same as possibly Jaden Sancho. For him, it's different reasons. But Anthony, it's more how he plays and how ineffective he is in actually creating chances or finishing them. That's my personal opinion. I watched him play at Ajax. He was great in the NDVC, but sometimes, just like with Ten Hag, step up is too big. So that's definitely a position I'm keeping a keen eye on in terms of possibly upgrading in terms of a player that I think fits in even better into the squad. Even if it is a downgrade, I'm open to it. But yeah, Taremi has led the line this season, allowed Hoyland to grow to a 78 rated player. A bunch more players on the bench have actually grown. Malasia has gone up to an 83 and Luke Shaw is unhappy. So that means Malasia has been playing all these games and Pavlovich 
has gone to a 78. Baran has, uh, was basically crying about not playing for the first half of the season. I wonder if he's okay again. He has still submitted a transfer request. Yeah, Pavlovich, for some reason, actually played a bunch of games. It seems like the game believes he's better than him. But Marcus Rashford with 30 goals and 6 assists. Bruno Fernandes coming in with 24 and 10. The two players that have basically carried Manchester United last season. And then here it is. A striker that can score you 20 plus goals a season with six goal contributions away from that as well. And Amrabat, Amrabat has done a great job. So for the first season, I'm extremely satisfied with what we have put up so far. Oh, wow. I, I completely forgot about this one. Wow. Well, Mason Greenwood's second season, he is back. I am sorry, but I do not see a way for Mason Greenwood to actually play for Manchester United again. I'm going to add him to the loan list. I think they're going to keep loaning him out until it's all over, until they can sell him on for a big chunk of money. If someone else wants to take that problem on themselves, that's what's going to happen. Because I do believe too many Manchester United fans are not okay with it. A couple of transfers have gone through. Some of them I wanted. Some of the others forced their way out of this team. It's not under my control, but Anthony, I have sold for 71.6 million. I'd rather rely on Garnacho. Yes, we are going to be giving the boy that seems to live and breathe Manchester United a chance to establish himself. And then, obviously, Rafa Varane requested a transfer. It wouldn't go away. He has left. And Luke Shaw also requested a transfer and has now left too. Now, I personally moved on Christian Eriksen because I think you need to move this man on. I don't see a spot for him in this side at the moment. And we have loaned out a couple of our youngsters. Maino is gone. Mejbri is gone. And Greenwood has gone to Real Madrid. <laughs> what a deal. I don't think their fans will be too happy with that one. One man that is an incredible center back is not getting play time at one of the biggest clubs in the world. I'm talking about Matthijs de Ligt. Yes, it is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace that this man has been sat on the bench so that Upa Mechanic can play next to Kim Min Jae. I find it horrible that Thomas Tuchel is not playing this guy. And for that reason, because he was specifically the best centre-back for Bayern Munich in the previous season and a fan favourite, I think he deserves starting 11 play. And now that Varane is gone, this transfer makes so much sense. He was linked to Manchester United before. I think all of us kind of know that already. But I am bringing him in to take over that Rafa Varane position, right-footed centre-back alongside Martinez. Both of them former Ajax players will probably have a good understanding with each other. I don't necessarily like the fact that I'm basically doing what Ten Hag has been doing by bringing in former Ajax players, but at least this one has actually proven himself on a higher level already. So I'm very happy with him. It's just a joke that Tuchel sits him on the bench. So yeah, he deserves a club where he actually starts. From one rival of Liverpool to the other rival of Liverpool, it is another Onana. Yes, Everton's Onana, a player that I truly believe is way too good for Everton. Someone that I personally really, really like because of his aggressiveness, because his stature on the pitch. This guy is a huge talent and someone big needs to pick him up. Now, he's going to come in as the backup to Amrabat, but most importantly, as the backup to Casemiro. Now, why? Because Casemiro is 32. I think that explains everything. Bextomine is not necessarily someone I personally believe in. He's a very good servant of the club. He does a good job, for especially the Scottish national team. But I do believe Onana could offer this team a lot more than what Mc McTominay could. So, yeah, he's coming into this squad. Another Onana has signed. Oh, would you look at that? 17 minutes in, Rasmus Hoylund has scored his goal in the Champions League. Congratulations, buddy. And he is also now approaching the rating of Taremi, which means he is probably going to be in the starting lineup very soon. What is it with this Manchester United team and constantly losing in Champions League semi-finals against their rivals? Liverpool beating them this time 4-2 to play against Manchester City in a final. One of their rivals will actually get this one, so that's a tough one for United fans to see. But United now in the fourth position, overtaken by the likes of Newcastle, 
Arsenal and Manchester City now above them, obviously. But we can take a look at the squad. And we are growing players into the starting eleven, which is something I love to see. So Hoylund now, starting from this next season, is going to be the starting uh, striker for this team. Garnacho is going to be the main man in that right wing position for me. Rashford, I'm pretty happy with. Bruno is now 30 years old, but he's 91 rated. We can get another good two years out of him. Casemiro, probably not as much. He will probably start declining very soon. Until then, I really hope Onana is at least at like an 84 or something like that. But Amrabat has gone up to an 86 and generally the defense looks very, very strong. So nothing bad there. The bench as well, quite strong in all areas. And I do believe that this team still has a lot more in them and we will see it. We will get to see that. But stats-wise, Rasmus Hoylund, 27-0. Bruno Fernandes, 28. Rashford, 19-9. And, and now it's 1-1. Oh, wow. Well. Manchester United, you surely don't drop points at home, do you? As I mentioned before, these deals had to be done. Jadon Sancho, no future at Manchester United, sold 52 million. Mason Greenwood sold for 22.7 to Spurs. McTominay is going to Aston Villa as the finishing transfer. I also don't believe bringing in just youngsters is the right way to do it, which we have shown with Taremi. But I am bringing in another backup CDM, one of the older, older ones. Guido Rodriguez has been putting up incredible stats in the Spanish division. Being one of the best defensive midfielders in there, and I'm actually surprised no one picked him up. He was shortly linked to Liverpool as they were looking for a CDM to come in. Now, we do have great backups here. I'm really happy with all of these, but I do need to drop someone off the bench. And you know what? It might have to be Pavlovic right here. I'm sorry, buddy, but I do need more midfielders than I do need centre-back substitutions. This time around, we came in fourth once again in the Premier League, but there's only a three-point gap to Chelsea. Now, I need to take this team to that next level. And honestly, I feel like I've done a great job. I've given some of these youngsters the time to grow. I haven't replaced the likes of Bambi Saka, who at Crystal Palace genuinely looked incredible and has shown some good performance again. And then we have Malasia, who has come out of nowhere, taken over Luke Shaw's position and basically kicked him out of the squad. And obviously bringing in De Ligt, I'm very happy with that. And just generally, Taremi had done a good job. We do need to bring in a backup uh, striker for the next season, that is for sure. But Hoylund has grown very, very nicely. Now, take a look at the stats real quick because we're about to go into a game. Yes. Rashford 34 and 8, Bruno 22 and 15, Hoylund only 13 goals. What the hell, buddy? Come on, you can do better. Diallo, oh, 13 and 11 off the bench. How the hell is he doing that? Garnacho should be playing. Huh? I'm so confused. How is that a thing? That is very, very odd. I don't know what the hell happened there. But guys, we are jumping in into the FA Cup final. Yes. We want to see our team go ahead and win this one at least. Come on, lads. The ratings look amazing. Get me this trophy. And they do. Marcus Rashford and Amrabat have done it. Amrabat getting a yellow straight after scoring. I'm assuming he has taken his shirt off. And the backup striker I'm going for to support Hoylund is gonna be Marcus Turam. Yes, the Frenchman is now going straight onto our bench instead of Taremi. Guess who scored again? It is Rasmus Hoylund taking United to 2-1. And we are possibly going for a Champions League final. Real Madrid beaten in the semi-final once, 2-0. And in the second one, too. We are going to the Champions League final with Rasmus Hoyland, Garnacho, and all these players in the starting 11. Actually, hold on. We have Barcelona. Wait, what? I thought we were already in there. Hold on. Yes, we are in there. <laughs> I thought that was the semi-final against Real Madrid. Anyways, we are going to be playing in that Champions League final, guys. I'm very excited about it. Congratulations to Rasmus Hoyland for having an amazing season so far. But here are the standings. We have an uh, amazing season. I should have said amazing game against Gala. But yeah, here we are. United, 92 points. First place, Premier League title secured. So that is beautiful. But let's go into the Cups as well. FA Cup, we haven't won that one. Carabao Cup, we haven't won that one. So let's take a closer look into the specific performances of the lads before we see their ratings. 31 and 15 from Bruno. As a 32-year-old captain, I absolutely love that. Hoylund on a 90 now. 28 and 1. Rashford 27 and 9. And Amrabat from CDM 12 and 13. He's up to a 90. 
Garnacho finally in the starting 11. Great stuff. And the starting 11 itself, I mean, just look at it. It looks beautiful. We haven't changed too much, honestly. We really have only De Ligt in the starting 11, really, that we have brought in. But generally, we have changed things around quite a bit, especially if you consider the bench and the types of players that we have relied on, like Garnacho as well, instead of Anthony. Now, on to the final. Inter is coming in with Harry Kane, Lautaro Martinez, Tigankov, Samaxima, Florentino, Gomez and Pavard in there in that defense as well. Obviously, Pavard, Pavard moved there, but Restes, a new goalkeeper as well, completely changed Inter. As we actually dive into this one, Manchester United have conceded once more. What are you guys doing? Uh-oh. Bad pass. They lift. Oh, wow. They hit the post straight away. Oh, Garnacho getting past one with ease. Here he goes. Garnacho has a runner in Hoylund. He will find him. He cuts in, shoots near post, and scores. Rasmus Hoylund. Amazing stuff. We love to see it. Casemiro. Need to get closer here. And we do get a big save of Onana. Ooh, off the line. Cleared by Van Bissaka and Onada. Casemiro, I need you to step in. Wow, he actually lobbed him. I mean, that must be the most ridiculous thing I've experienced so far in this game. What the hell was that? Hoylund. That's a move. That's a move. There is Hoylund, actually. The other one was uh, Garnacho. Marcus Rashford. Against the keeper. Penalty. We will take a penalty. Hoylund scored two goals in real life. Hoylund scores two goals in here. Nope. Not true. Let's also show some love to the players that we have brought in. Guido Rodriguez and Onana coming in to shore up this win. Defend it, lads. Defend it. You got it in your hands. Yes, you do. And in the end, this trophy is being lifted by United alongside the Premier League trophy that we have won as well. And I got to say, man, United do have a good team. You just have to sort out the mess that the club has turned into and bring in a manager that basically knows how to get the best out of actual top quality players. So United, you have the potential to come back and become one of the best teams in England for sure. And right here, thank you so much for watching this one. I appreciate you all. I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.